What are you talking about? I didn't cut my hair. No, yeah, this is real. This is real. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Dawn Shard novella, the 3.5 book in the Stormlight Archive, which I've just finished, even though it's pretty late. So let's get into that. Now, the easiest thing to compare this novella to is the previous novella, which is called Edge Dancer, which was about Lyft, which is weird because some people are calling that novella kind of bad and this one really good. So let's see how the comparisons lie. First things first, I think the Edge Dancer was an okay book. I rated it a two out of five stars, which in my book is a good book. Uh, good, like above average, or at least average. Thing is, comparatively, I think that this book is about equal. So I don't know why people are saying one book is better than the other. These two books are very different in many respects, the main respect being that the first book, Edge and Enter, focuses on one person, Lyft. And this one focuses on two or three or a whole crew of people, depending on how you look at it. And I think that that is the main comparison between the two. The first one opts for a more emotional story, engaging story with one person, while Donchard is trying to go for a rounded, full story, really trying to encapsulate the world building and the exploration of the saga and distill it into one story, which makes them very different because one is a character story and one is a character story that's really, that's really, truly just trying to expand the plot. And I think in that respect, it is one of the best books that I've read so far from Sanderson in that the exploration of the world, of the of the ideas of the actual physical world and what's going to happen in the future was explored the best in Don Shard, uh, above anything else. Because in most stories, I have a problem with Sanderson in that he doesn't really clearly show what the impact of a certain situation will be. Like we see something cool happening and then we see, okay, this is the next step. Okay, then this is the next step and this is the next step. But here we have something interesting in that we've kind of opened up a little pathway into a larger, larger universe. And it really opens up the story in a way that we haven't seen before in one specific Sanderson plot. While it was opening up the storyline to many, many different places, it was also pretty cool. And it was really engaging and I liked for that. It felt like for the first time in a long time, I felt like Sanderson really earned the fact that he had expanded the universe. It really felt that way and it really felt awesome. And that, that was the first time I felt that in this series. Usually I enjoy the plot, I enjoy the character, you know, just, just enjoying the moments. But this is the first time I've enjoyed the scope of the world. And it was a very simple way of showing something really grand. Now the difference between this one and Edge Dancer, like I said before, was really the character. First one, Edge Dancer was really focused on one character. This one was focused on many. And I think that that was its greatest downfall. I've seen a lot of people call this story really character heavy. And I agree with that. In my opinion, it doesn't go far enough. Now the character in this book was fine. It was a perfectly fine story. But once again, it doesn't exceed any of my expectations for Sanderson, especially with Stormlight Archive. I just, I, I've thought about it a lot. His characters are not that good. I, I really don't think that they're that good. However, it, it's good enough for Sanderson. For Sanderson, it works and it's enough that it pretty much is average. So I can't really say too much about that. The problem here is that this is a character book. This book takes place on a ship in the middle of the sea where nothing is really happening. And so for the first half of the book, we've got essentially just character moments going on. There's very little plot going on. And if there is, it is based in character decisions. So what, what this creates is that the characters have to be strong enough to carry the weight of this entire plot. And they teeter on the edge. Because frankly, the biggest problem with this book is the first half in which I put it down many, many, many times because it was just, it, it felt boring. It felt like too little was happening, even though character was happening all the time, it felt like too little plot was happening. And I'm sure he expected that it is a story set on a boat with basically nothing going on for the first half of it. So it's obvious that this would happen. Um, but I, I, I think that he tried to make up for it with character, um, but ultimately failed. Because while the character is fine, it doesn't carry the weight of a hundred pages of just them going out to sea. Because what you need in a Sanderson book, always, what you always need in a Sanderson book is something new, exciting, fresh. And you get all of that in the second half of the story. But in the first half, it's just not strong enough. The second half, however, like I said, did have all of that. It had interesting characters. It had great character motivations. It had awesome plot. It had just good stuff. It had stuff that you expect from Sanderson. And it is at Sanderson's best. And I've enjoyed that. Even though I don't consider Sanderson's best that great, it's pretty good. And I'm happy with it uh, for what it is. Despite that, I have seen a, a couple comments on the... Uh, uh, actual, you know, finale, the, the great conflict right at the end where I'm not going to spoil it, but something goes down and it's very obviously this is the ending. This is the plot. This is the fight. This is the fight. And that was interesting. People called that too obvious, too ham-fisted. I don't agree with them. I think that this is one of the things I'm actually different with the majority of people on. I like the ending. I think that it was built up very well and the conflict was re resolved really great. And it was done so in such a way that it fit the rest of the story and the rest of the narrative. Now, once again, since it was a character-based story, you have to rate the characters. And for this, I am going to say 
what's her name? Risen? Risen? <laughs> Risen. Risen. I think that she was uh, a very difficult character to understand. I think that a lot of the stuff that she told us was told and not shown. And I think that was the biggest problem with her. Even though her character was interesting, it was good. A lot of the character stuff that we got out of her was purely just spoken and just it was through her mind it was through the narration none of it was shown and i understand that was probably very difficult on on a boat but that, even with that limitation that is a bad situation to be in because what it does is it doesn't allow you to show many of the character problems and i think that is the ultimate downfall of risen she is a fine character if she had been able to show it if she had been able to show it way more than just saying oh she felt this way oh she felt that way because that was powerful and that was good and that was a fine character but it wasn't strong enough to carry the entire story now i want to bring along somebody else to rate the story for us so uh, i've got along here my best friend here Okay, and everybody, welcome here, welcome here. Hey guys, it's Sam. As you can see, neither of us have cut our hair. Neither of us. Dawn Chat was much better than Edge Dance, in my opinion. It has way more characters from the previous books, which I thought was really good since what good happened, thing. yeah, because of what happened in the previous books linked up to this book quite a bit. But Edge Dance didn't really link up much at all. Also, it still had the main character completely different than the Radiance that we've learned, which was so much better than Edge Dancer because Edge right. Dancer... This is the f I think this is the first yeah. character we've had in a long time that hasn't been a Radiant. That's why I thought it was so good because um, in Edge Dancer we had Lex... That is a plus in my who opinion was That is a interesting. Who was a Radiant, she, um, but she didn't really serve much purpose. I don't understand why she was there, but she was still kind of an interesting character. But Risen, she is not a Radiant. She serves a completely different purpose, and I feel like it opened my eyes to way more what's gonna happen in the book. But it was really slow, and that's what I hated about it. That first You hated time, it? I, you got not, you heard it here today, Aria hates Dontrad. I don't hate Dontrad. That's what I hate about it. It was slow for the first half, and I read it over like a couple days, period. But the second half, I read really quickly. Even still, only half of the second half, so... Um, a quarter of the book was actually like exciting and fighting. I think that's just me personally because I love battles and I could tell this book was on a boat which was different than the other books that it was normally on a battlefield. Now, the, the battle was good, right? And the yeah. battle is always good. But did you feel that, I mean, usually we have the Stormlight book, even the eight, first 80% of it, of any Stormlight book, is still really good. It's still very mm -hmm. engaging because of the plot progression. Did you feel that it was the same way here? Um, for not 80%, maybe a bit less. The characters were getting better, you could see that. Though I didn't really think Risen got that much, like, yeah. improved. Uh, yeah, her but character I development like was, was very already, interesting and I think it was yeah. very diminished. I thought, I thought that thing, I don't oh. know what diminished. Okay, well thank you very much, Air. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, go home. Bye. Okay, uh, also, what did you rate it? I rated it at three stars. She rated it three stars on good reads. I rated it a two and a half. A two. I've rated both of them at two stars. I think that they're about even. Edge Dancer does character a lot better. This one does an actual plot that relates to the rest of the story a lot cooler. And plus, uh, like Air said, the main character is not a Radiant. And that just makes things a lot more interesting because I've kind of gotten bored of Radiants too. So overall, Air has rated this a three stars and I have rated this a two stars. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for future uh, videos, especially if you want to see the Rhythm of War review that I'm going to do very, very soon. Also, you can follow me on Goodreads to see what book I'm reading right now and how far I am on every book that I'm reading. And also, tell me what you think of this book in the comments down below. I would love to discuss with any and all of you down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.